emerging markets. And very quickly, let me just present to you the so-called emerging markets. Next, please. And don't believe the current reports, the, the, the briefs in the emerging markets are gone. No way they will be gone. There will be temporary dislocations. But do you know why emerging markets will define the 21st century? Because they're the opposite of the tiger economies. The tiger economies were growing very fast, Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea. But there were teeny weeny in populations. Singapore at that time was 3 billion, Hong Kong 4 billion, Taiwan 15 billion. South Korea was the largest 20 billion. They did not have a global impact. And much worse, they had absolutely no natural resources to speak of. Hong, Hong Kong was a rock. Singapore was a rock. Think of the emerging markets today, especially Indonesia, Vietnam, and the Philippines. Huge domestic market, which makes them relatively immune to the ups and downs of the global economy. Because they can sell to their own people. And secondly, they're oozing with natural resources out of there. Indonesia is my favorite country. Let's think of Indonesia. Name any resource on this planet and Indonesia has it. Petroleum, mineral, millions of hectares of plantations, 14,000 islands. You know, we Filipinos are so proud of our 7,000 islands. The Indonesians are twice. So, don't count out the emerging markets just because a few individuals who are very disappointed about their stock market performance are saying that's the end of BRICS in the emerging market. No, sir. They will be around for a long, long time to come. Next, please. Those are the next 11. Just watch the tree, VIP. What happened to Thailand? Thailand, unfortunately, is the first country in the history of humanity to grow old before becoming rich. Believe it or not, Thailand already has a demographic profile very close to Singapore. Enrico knows very well what the Singaporean leaders are saying almost every day to their women. Please have babies. Have four, if possible, more. Singaporean women are responding. The Thais having a per capita income of only $4,000 versus Singapore's $40,000 already has have an aging society. And for those of you who are operating in Thailand, you know that Thailand is short of 1 million workers for their labor-intensive enterprises. That's the tragedy of Thailand. Next, please. I just wanted to show you what I meant by not being export dependent. Indonesia is only 26% dependent on export. The Philippines, 31. Take a look at the dependence of Singapore, 209% dependent on exports. Take a look at the dependence of, of Hong Kong, 229% dependent on exports. So it's a no-brainer. When the world is having a recession, these poor tigers become pussycats. That's exactly what's happening. Next, please. Now, I just wanted to show you that the Philippines has several regions that you should be looking at. And I'm sure the Cebuanos will not mind. One city that I think many of you are disregarding is Cagayan de Oro. It's a super duper in terms of university graduates. Ateneo, Save University, produces some of the best quality university students. And they have three, four other universities. And let me tell you, when that bomb exploded a month ago, I was right there in Link Tech Thai. I'm very sad about the number of deaths, but it was a non-event. Don't believe, especially the U.S. government, when they issue all sorts of advisories. They don't know what they're talking about. So, Cagayan de Oro should be in your map because of the very educated people they have. It's three times to Maguete. And I'm sure you're very familiar with the Maguete. Of course, I am biased in fair with the Maguete because I grew up there. My father was the provincial health director 
But since many of you are happy with the Magueta, you will be even happier with the Gwendor. So please, look at Gwendor. Next, please. So those are the figures. And as Giorgio at this point, Dr. Abola will tell you tomorrow in one of the panels, their forecast for the second quarter is 8.5. And if you assume that the last quarter every year always oozes with remittances from our Filipinos abroad, you can expect the exchange rate to stabilize at 44 to 1. So that's our forecast. Year end, 44 to 1. Now, let me already move, since I have limited time, to the other one, talent advantage of the Philippines. The other. There's a second PowerPoint. Which is more directly related, really, to your industry. This was presented by one of the leading executive search companies, Ward Howell Zulueta SMG, in one of our road shows with Bong Bora and company. Please, next. So, foundation to be success, suitable and modern talent, cost competitiveness, excellent infrastructure, excellent in terms of at least telecom. I'm not talking about roads and bridges. In fact, the biggest weakness of the Aquino administration is the Department of Transport and Communication. I'm so disappointed. Nothing is happening there. All the PPPs are PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> so you better tell Secretary Abaya, and not to mention Secretary Mar Rojas, we are disappointed with DOTC. But tremendous accomplishments of Department of Public Works and Highways, because Senator Singh Son is probably the best secretary we've had since the beginning of the Republic. I'm not exaggerating. Next, please. Here, education, 500,000 every year, 3.2 million licensed professionals, adaptable multicultural exposure, language, you do know this very well, low cost, average money compensation, $279. And good labor in glory. Take a look at those figures. Only two strikes in 2011 in the Philippines. 220 in China and 978 in Vietnam. Next please. We are a very young country. And that will be with us for at least the next 10 to 20 years. I can assure you the RH bill will fail. Filipino males are so macho, they will use the condoms to cover mangoes to protect them against insects. <laughs> this is not a joke. This is what happened during the Marcos administration. This was important by Blas Ople in them. But I will not fight the battle of RHB here. Next, please. Take a look at average wages. India are abundant in technical. We're not very far. Second, next week. Here, English voice outsourcing. We're not the lowest. Delhi has lower, but in terms of quality, especially now with the depreciation of the rupee, but at least in terms of quality. And so let me now end by saying, emphasizing that you have to focus a lot more on what is going to happen to the AEC, the ASEAN Economic Community. The AEC, in 10 to 20 years, will do what the EEC did in Europe. Just remember what happened in the last century. A whole continent devastated by the Second World War because they formed a customs union, then a common market, then an EU, by the end of the last century, they were big enough to challenge the U.S. and Japan for economic supremacy in the global economy. Our forecast is in the next 20 years, with 600 million people, the AEC will be strong enough as they really make the economic community a reality to challenge China and India for economic supremacy in Asia. 
So don't ignore the ASEAN economic community. Thank